Hey guys, uh, been a while again. I, every time I upload a video, I say I'm going to do more uh, YouTube stuff and then uh, other things get in the way and I don't end up doing it, so I thought I'd throw a quick video up just to uh, let you guys know what I have going on here. Uh, if you're just coming across this video, you've never heard of my little business or seen other videos before, basically I do uh, custom knives and lately been doing some little custom pocket tools, so uh, you can take a look at my Instagram, JW Knives, or some other uh, previous videos to kind of get a feel for the kind of work I do. But for those of you who have been around for a while, you'll kind of know what's going on. So I'll just get it right into it. This is a box I just picked up today of uh, heat treated D2 tools and knives. Um, I don't think I have any. I still have a bunch on the wall here. Uh, these are all heat treated as well, D2. Basically, that's been my. Uh, one of my go-to blade styles for a while. For now, it's still called just the EDC version two. Uh, this was my version one blade shape for a while. Very uh, rough and unfinished. These are when I still profiled the blades all by hand, so they're all a little inconsistent, but now that I use a water jet guy, um, they're all pretty, uh, they're all the exact same profile. So that's one of my go-to models. These are all gonna be uh, right hand chisel ground except for this one and something new I'd say in 2015 I've probably sold eight or nine of these and these will be the first ones and going forward they'll all have this uh, this jimping up on the top here so uh, nice little handy compact blades these are just rough grinds again I just picked these up from heat tree today so the uh, the plunge comes back another probably half the distance that's left and then uh, they end up getting like a compound grind so these are hollow and then you have a little flat grind tip so it's got the uh, the two grinds on the, the bevel there also in here I have some of my G4 tools in D2 this all started as 3 16 a bunch of the G5s in D2 as well as the um, the G3 which uh, has been pretty popular I get a lot of emails about these and they're kind of a pain to do so I only do them uh, once every six months and then small batch as you can see I have sort of a mini graveyard of them here because they're very easy to uh, to mess up just because you're working with such a small tool trying to get the nice sharp edge and keep the tips uh, pointy all that kind of stuff so I have 10 of those and uh, that's it for the heat treat and then in addition to uh, the small blade I had my water jet guy basically just expand the uh, profile using the same file and then just make it narrower in the handle and the blade so this is essentially the same knife but as you can see it's a full size uh, blade I think it's just over eight inches long so that'll be a fun one to get going I have three of those as well and with him right now is a sheet of uh, 3v that I have large small and uh, g3 is getting cut from so that's it for the uh, the knife stuff you'll see here I've been going to the range quite a bit more and uh, I've been Collecting some of the uh, the brass and what I've been doing is actually using these It'll focus on them. I use my saw Cut them down buff them up a bit then using my mill here. I uh, Tonight I'm working on thick tie ones of the single focus and I uh, mill down into the g5 a little pocket And then I epoxy those into the tool. I got some pictures on my Instagram of the first one I did I've only sold one of those like that so far so uh, with these five, I hope to make it kind of a, a regular item. Just the standard uh, titanium tools. I don't even think I have any out here. But like, here's an example of a couple that, other than being stonewashed, are pretty much complete. And they just got kind of boring to do. There was nothing really uh, unique about them. I did sell quite a few, but I'm kind of leaning more towards, um, like here's... This is kind of like the Bandicoot graveyard. Something's wrong with all these, but doing ones with the uh, bronze with mosaic pin insert. Here's one that didn't quite work out, but I did a few of these that had three tritium inserts that went right through the tool, and you'd see the little glowing dots on the ends. Then, of course, with the mill, this is just a piece I used to line up my tooling, but I did sort of a maze pattern, and I've done this, what I call a pinstripe pattern with the mill. Kind of makes things a little more unique and fun to do. Speaking of that, I did a few of these. It's actually carbon fiber with a titanium base that I drill and tap screws into and then they're epoxied together so there's no seam here and then the, uh, the screws kind of had a bit more strength so I sold I think two of those and I have 
three more here, but unfortunately there's kind of some things wrong with them. Water jetting, carbon fiber can be tricky, so that was kind of a project that kind of worked, kind of didn't. But other than that, guys, that's kind of all I have going on for now. I'm going to get going uh, a lot more on the knives. They kind of went on the back burner all of this year and most of last year as well because of the uh, pocket tools. But uh, I'm trying to find a bit more better balance with that. So other than that, guys, here's... Uh, another bucket of the parts that I use so what I do here is I'm planning on doing a, a copper titanium hybrid tool so kind of like the carbon fiber um, when you grind it down you'll see the the titanium signal and the reason I did this is just because carbon fiber on its own and especially copper is far too soft and fragile to actually have any true prying capability or even with the bottle opener it would wear down pretty quick so the idea is that by having the uh, the base layer of titanium, especially on the pry tip, you're using the titanium part, which is uh, quite a bit tougher than the copper or the carbon fiber or any other material that I use on top. So those are kind of some of the uh, projects on the go. And other than that, it's just uh, shop's pretty much the same as the last tour video I gave. Uh, still just the old Grizzly grinder holding up perfect. If there's any beginning knife makers out there, I strongly recommend that's the grinder you pick up, especially if you're on a budget at first. Even coming to Canada, I think it was less than a thousand bucks with duty and import fees and everything, and I've been using it for two years now, almost daily, and it's never had, I've never had one issue. Every time you pull the switch, it just fires up and goes. So there's obviously much better grinders out there, but for the price, if you're just looking to get going with it, this one's hard to beat. And other than that, guys, that's it for now. Check out my website. I redesigned it and added a new gallery and the web store and everything's a little different. So if you're interested in anything, you can check that out. And I also have a little news feed on the main page where I uh, post updates and stuff. So anyway, guys, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, you can shoot me an email, any comments or anything, leave them below. I'll try to respond. And uh, kind of like I say every time, I'll be hoping to uh, upload a few more YouTube videos here and there. Thanks, guys.